The internet is a big place, and it's full of bizarre mysteries. Many of them are never solved. But every now and then, self-proclaimed internet detectives band together from across the globe to dive down the rabbit hole and uncover the truth. And sometimes they succeed. So from an apparently cursed arcade machine to a spine-chilling photograph of unknown origins, let's investigate some seriously strange mysteries that were solved by Reddit and the internet. Perplexing Post-its If someone went to the effort of breaking into your home, you'd expect them to make off with your TV or something, right? Not plan a bunch of cryptic post-it notes. Yet back in 2015, Reddit user rbradbury1920 posted to a legal advice thread when he suspected someone of doing exactly that. In the post, Bradbury explained that over the last few days, he'd been waking up to find strange notes stuck around his bedroom, written in handwriting that wasn't his own. The notes ranged from mundane reminders to save his PC documents to ominous claims that his landlord wasn't letting the mystery writer speak to him. <sighs> Bradbury lived alone and there was no sign of breaking and entering, so he assumed his landlord was trying to scare him. But he had no idea why. So in an effort to catch the intruder in the act, he'd set up a webcam to record at night. However, on checking the files the next day, he found they'd all been deleted. Uh, what? The Reddit post exploded as people tried to get to the bottom of it all, but everybody was stumped, until one commenter by the name of Kakerlack posted his two cents. Kakerlack posited that there was no mystery intruder at all and that Bradbury himself was responsible for the notes. But how? Three words. Carbon monoxide leak. Carbon monoxide, or CO, is a poisonous gas produced by some home appliances that can make you seriously ill if you breathe it in. Plus, it's colorless and odorless, so the only way to know it's even there is through special CO detectors. Now get this, one of the symptoms of CO poisoning is amnesia. Could Bradbury have been forgetting he wrote the notes? Seems plausible, but what about the deleted camera files and the handwriting? Well, after checking his CO detector, Bradbury made another post. It turns out Kakerlack was right. He'd suffered brain swelling due to a carbon monoxide leak and was writing the notes himself in a confused state, then completely forgetting about them. It was so bad that he couldn't even recognize his own handwriting. As for the deleted cam footage, it wasn't deleted. It would never been recorded in the first place. Bradbury had been so out of it that he hadn't set the camera up properly. Jeez. Ten months later, he reported that he was still recovering from the effects of the poisoning, but felt positive about his future. So Kakerlack probably saved his life. Hopefully, Bradbury made a full recovery in the end and got a nice payout from his landlord. I'd be fuming. Braving the Basement Personally, I can't think of any good reason to go exploring an abandoned 19th century psychiatric hospital. But Reddit user and fearless explorer Boneless Hot Dog seems to disagree with me. There's one close to his home and having apparently never seen a horror movie in his life, BHD decided to explore the totally not haunted location back in November 2022. After sneaking in through an unlocked door, he traversed the halls and crept downstairs to the basement where he came across something that absolutely baffled him. Sat silently in the gloom was this enigma. Was it some kind of doorway? If so, where the heck did it lead? After getting a closer look, Boneless concluded that this strange structure was actually some sort of device with a door on each end and rusted gauges on the side. The word ammonia was written on one of them, but that was the only clue that the explorer had. I'd have just assumed this was some kind of horrific trap from the Saw movies and runaway screaming. But Boneless was hungry for the truth. So he got home and uploaded photos of the unknown device to Reddit. Was it some kind of furnace? If so, for what? <sighs> well, not quite. But before we get to the dark secrets of the basement, let me take a moment to talk about something that should never be a mystery. Your mental health. BetterHelp are this video's sponsor, and they know that life can be super busy, making it all too common for people to neglect their mental wellness. I've definitely been guilty of this in the past. Whether you're suffering with a condition like depression or just having a hard time, 
therapy can give you a whole new set of tools to thrive. BetterHelp is designed to make therapy easy, affordable, and accessible for everybody, which is why I'm excited to be talking about it today. Because it's online, BetterHelp makes finding a therapist easy. By just answering a few simple questions, you'll be matched with the right one for you in just a few days. And if you don't quite gel with your therapist, no problem. BetterHelp allows you to switch to another one at no additional cost with zero stress or hassle. Music to my ears. To take your mental health into your own hands, follow the link in this video's description heading to betterhelp.com slash be amazed. That way you can take your first step towards self-care with a 10% discount off your first month. So whether you're struggling or just want some guidance, why not try BetterHelp? It could be exactly what you've been looking for. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting the channel. Now back to the mystery. Where were we again? Oh, that's right. Our intrepid urban explorer had just uploaded some snaps of that strange device to Reddit. After a myriad of suggestions had been ruled out, one wise Redditor was able to unveil the truth. It wasn't a saw trap, a door to unspeakable horrors, or a furnace. It was an autoclave. Autoclaves use steam and pressure to sterilize equipment and are commonly found in healthcare settings. This particular one was so huge because it was designed for the mattresses and bedding of patients. <clears throat> Not the patients themselves. Phew. As for why it said ammonia on it, the compound can be used to increase the strength of any disinfectant used in the sterilization process. Simple. So maybe not as dramatic as you were hoping for, but I for one am glad that this thing isn't actually the work of a sadistic madman. If you want to keep up to date with the work of a non-sadistic serial YouTuber, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. You wouldn't want to miss out on another mysterious video like this one. Okay, now back to the mysteries. Find Satoshi. In 2005, an alternate reality game was released called Perplex City. Players bought packs of cards containing random puzzles, solved them, and followed the clues they provided to try and find a cash prize hidden somewhere in the real world. The game has largely been forgotten over the years because its creators abandoned it after the first prize was won. However, one card from 2006 was never forgotten. This puzzle, titled Billion to One, featured a mysterious unknown man with some Japanese text simply reading, Find Me. Players had one clue. The man's name was Satoshi. Some people became obsessed with this mystery and quickly established a website dedicated to the search. Surely with the power of the internet, it'd get solved in no time, right? Wrong. The web was a very different place back in the prehistoric 2000s and the conundrum would mostly need to be solved through word of mouth. There was some level of success when someone figured out Satoshi snapped his selfie in Kaiserberg, France, but nothing else of note was uncovered for years. Time went by and it seemed the mystery would never be solved, but then in December 2020, Reddit user Thomei blew the whole thing wide open. See, Thomei opted to run Satoshi's photo through an AI facial recognition software and found this image. The fellow on the right holding a beer looked awfully familiar, and a little extra sleuthing uncovered even more images of the man, along with a page on his company website. Was this really him? The community fired off an email and waited with bated breath. Then, after what was probably the longest 24 hours of their lives, they received a response. It was Satoshi. 14 years after the search began, it had finally come to an end. Satoshi had forgotten what he was supposed to actually reveal, but given that it had been over a decade, I think we can forgive him. However, because the puzzle was solved with AI tech unavailable back in 2006, can we really say it was fair? Let me know down in the comments what you think. Feeling Fantastic if you spent a decent amount of time on the internet back in the 2010s, you probably remember the video, I Feel Fantastic. For those not in the know, it's a strange, bordering on disturbing clip featuring a creepy singing robot. The unsettling video sprang up seemingly out of nowhere and went viral, spooking everybody unfortunate enough to stumble across it. The leading theory at the time was that the android in the video was created by a crazed criminal who would dress the android up in the clothes of his victims. 
Sounds a little far-fetched, but the thing was undeniably creepy. The original video was mysteriously taken down, but re-uploads continued to haunt the internet for many years without explanation, until one writer called Yitzi Lit set out to investigate in 2020. Lit managed to track down images of the strange robot to obscure Android appreciation websites dating back to 2001, which, yes, were apparently a thing. These sites listed the creator as one John Bergeron. Big John was apparently attempting to create a revolutionary android for use in the entertainment industries. Named Tara, the one in the video was a prototype that cost him $2,000 to create, or some $3,400 today. His plan was to mass produce her, but considering we've never seen Tara performing a world tour, I'll assume this never ended up happening. Instead, we got one very freaky music video and a whole lot of questions. So there you go. No crazy criminal here, just a man trying his best to invent something special. Tara may be creepy as hell to us, but I'm sure she was a labor of love for her creator. How sweet. In a slightly off-putting way. Helly Tubbies. The Cursed Images subreddit is full of twisted pictures that are designed to make your skin crawl. None I've seen have quite stuck with me like this one, though. Yes, that's a group of people in second-rate Teletubbies costumes looking like they're about to perform a satanic ritual with a small child. To say there's something off about it is a gross understatement. Because of this uncanniness, it's been posted and reposted everywhere, usually alongside stories about how it's cursed. Then in 2022, Redditor Bobby posted the image on the internet mystery subreddit with a newfound determination to find its true origins and everything changed. Eagle-eyed commenters pointed out that because of the bed style and the IV drip in the corner, it's probably in a hospital. On top of that, the poster on the wall features soccer player Dennis Burkamp, who played for the British team Arsenal from 1995 to 2006. Given this info, the pick must have been taken in the UK around the late 90s. Aha! With this in mind, YouTuber Scare Theater did his own digging and with some nifty reverse image searching found the first time it was ever posted. Redditor JF1984 was responsible. Apparently, he'd seen it on the wall of a hospital in England under the heading Celebrities Who Visited Us. Unable to ignore the sheer creepiness, he'd taken the snap, uploaded it to the internet, and the rest is history. So it looks like these demons genuinely intended to put a smile on the face of that poor kid. <laughs> they failed. Miserably. Extra Torrential. I once found evidence of alien activity inside my toilet. I'd tell you more, but I'm on an FBI watch list now. When Reddit user Robbo66 started scanning through Google Maps in Hampshire, Southern England, though, the last thing he expected to come across was evidence of alien activity. Indeed, Robbo stumbled on these bizarre markings in the middle of a field in 2022 and was utterly confused. They look kind of like crop circle patterns, right? But none I've ever seen before. Could this finally be proof that aliens have landed? Desperate to know, Robbo did what any sensible person does nowadays. He posted the mysterious image on Reddit. Shock horror, it was quickly determined that the markings probably aren't alien landing sites. They're actually trial trenches, and a whole lot of them. Basically, before any major construction project can take place, the area needs to be checked for archaeological significance. If there were ancient structures or artifacts just beneath the surface, they could be permanently lost, so a few trenches are dug to see what can be found. The fact that this area has so many means people probably thought it was hiding some real juicy stuff. Whether it actually was, I can't say for sure. But another Redditor unearthed a proposal for a shopping area in this exact location, so we at least know the reason the trenches were dug in the first place. So no UFOs this time. Unless it's all a cover-up, of course. Gidus Strap in because I'm about to take you on a wild journey to a fantastical land of wacky creatures and intrigue. Back in 2017, comedian Nate Fernald was browsing online for some retro pins to add to his collection when he stumbled upon this exceedingly odd little trinket titled Gidus. Having never heard of it before, Fernald found himself strangely allured to the weird badge. 
A Google search turned up nothing, though, and the seller of the mystery pen had no idea when or where it was acquired. Now, Fernald was even more interested, so he posted a pic of the pen to Twitter and begged the internet for help. Not knowing what Gitas was was driving him crazy, and before long, Gitas had infected the minds of a whole host of Fernald's followers, too. And since the self-professed Geeters set out to discover the origin of the pen and even set up their own subreddit dedicated to the hunt. Amazingly, the search gained so much interest that within a few months, thousands of internet sleuths had taken up the cause. Eventually, a Twitter user found a lead. They'd managed to track down an old sticker sheet featuring none other than Geetus, alongside some other wacky characters. It was enigmatically labeled The Land of Ta, as if from some long-forgotten fantasy franchise. Another caption on the sheet informed them that it was created by a paper and branding business named Denison in 1981, so the sleuths got to work trying to get in touch with its former employees. However, the company had since merged with another and it proved impossible to find anyone that used to work there before the merge. So as Denison had been based in the city of Framingham, Massachusetts, they contacted the Framingham History Center to see if they'd know anything. Lo and behold, the center responded with good news. They had several Denison sticker sheets in their archives, including the Land of Ta. <gasps> the sheet was legit. The center put the Geeters in contact with some employees in Denison, and though their memories were rusty, they remembered the sticker artist, one Sam Petrucci. Sam had unfortunately passed away, but his children were happy to help. They looked through his old files and found the original sketches used in the sheet. Damn, so case closed? Well, not really. We still don't know why these stickers were commissioned. Gita's and the Land of Ta remain as obscure as it gets, and the Denison employees were adamant that they never produced the enamel pens. So, who did? Who would go to the effort of producing expensive pens for a fantasy franchise nobody's ever heard of? Gosh dang it. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Polybius. Back before video game consoles were a thing, people had to leave the house and head to an arcade to play games. I know, archaic, right? But arcades were kind of mystical in a way. You never knew what games you'd find when you popped inside one. You just better have hoped you didn't find Polybius. See, Polybius was a spooky arcade cabinet from 1981 that apparently had some pretty nasty side effects on people. Supposedly, players experienced seizures, insomnia, night terrors, hallucinations, and more. Whew. And I thought Fortnite was bad for your brain. According to legend, Men in Black would lurk near the machines and examine the data they'd gathered from players when nobody else was around. What they wanted to know, we can't be sure. Then, after just a single month of being released, the mysterious machine vanished forever, leaving no trace of its brief existence. Decades later, in 2017, YouTuber Ahoy decided to investigate the myth properly. He scoured the internet for any mention of the game and was eventually led to a website called coinop.org. The site held a vast database of old arcade games and seemed to have the first online mention of Polybius. A man named Kurt Collar ran it, and according to a former writer for gaming magazine GamePro, Kurt had told them about the legend in 2003. After they subsequently featured it in an issue that year, word of Polybius spread like wildfire. Ahoy reached out to Kurt and he refused to admit it, but everything points to him inventing the Polybius myth in an effort to drive traffic to his website. That sly dog. So it seems Polybius never really existed. But with Kurt refusing to play ball, who knows? Maybe the men in black gave him a visit and told him to keep his lips tightly sealed. Mutant Monster As much as I love Resident Evil, we all know virus-infected monsters aren't real, right? But when Reddit user PBJ Burger went out onto his lawn one morning in 2019, this belief was challenged in a shocking way. He found this thing squirming around on one of his chairs. Ah, what the heck is that? The strange beast was about the size of a bottle cap, and PBJ was desperate to find out whether it posed a threat. So you guessed it, he snapped a pic of it and posted it on Reddit. The post quickly gained traction, and though the majority of commenters were just as scared and stumped as PBJ, one person recognized the little creeper. Any guesses? No? 
It was actually a moth larva, specifically of the hag moth. And despite how they look, both larva and moth are harmless to humans, or at least mostly. The larva can't do any serious damage, but it is coated in defensive spines that can be irritating and painful if touched. So just leave him alone and he'll leave you alone. There's no need to call Leon Kennedy this time. Door of Doom? In 2020, Reddit user JerryCat88 posted this uncanny image to the What Is This Thing subreddit. He'd spotted a strange door in the side of a seawall in Biarritz, France, and I can't say I blame JerryCat for being so curious. The door looks super off. I mean, who's using it? Does some horrible creature lurk in there just waiting to crawl up the side and snatch someone? <sighs> Thankfully, Reddit stepped up to quell my, uh, I mean, Jerry Cat's fears. Believe it or not, the image doesn't show a horrific portal to the underworld at all. It's just a tide gate. What the heck is that, I hear you ask? Well, tide gates can be opened or closed whenever needed to prevent floodings. The doors lead to special overflow areas, so if there's a storm, the extra water can run into the open doors instead of rising up over the edge and onto the roads. Simple, right? That said, the idea still isn't entirely scare-free. Imagine being trapped inside one of them as it steadily fills with water. Or actually, maybe don't. The device. I hate getting work done on my car. It always costs me an arm and a leg. But when Californian resident and avid Redditor Khalid went to a mechanic with his buddy Yasir in 2017, they discovered something even more unsettling. A strange device had been stuck near Yasir's car exhaust. Khaled's immediate thought was that it was some sort of tracking device, though after showing it to his pal's roommates, they thought it was a bomb. <laughs> Yikes. Concerned, Khaled turned to Reddit and posted a photo of the strange object with some extra context. See, Yasir had apparently been of interest to the FBI because of his late father. Why exactly is unclear, but the boys believed it had something to do with his role as a Muslim leader. The organization had previously tried to contact Yasir, but backed off when he lawyered up. So could the FBI have been secretly following him? Reddit quickly identified the object, and it wasn't good news. As feared, it was a Guardian GPS tracking device. Sales of such a tracker are limited only to Army and law enforcement, so it was totally the FBI's doing. The duo had no idea what to do with it, but they wouldn't have to think too long. Within just 48 hours of the post, FBI agents showed up to get the device back from Yasir. The truth was, they'd been monitoring him because of a Reddit comment made by none other than Khaled. Supposedly, he'd been propagating extremist ideas, but that's a huge stretch. In reality, he'd just posted a short comment about chopping mall security. And because of it, Yasir ended up getting tracked just for being a known friend of Khaled's. Well, Yasir was rightfully annoyed by this and tried to sue the Bureau, though he was unfortunately unsuccessful. Hopefully, the officers that planted the tracker got at least a firm reprimand, though sadly I doubt it. Have you seen this man? Since January 2006, thousands of people across the world have supposedly dreamt of this man. Sometimes he acts nice, other times he acts maliciously. But it's always the same man. The question is... Have you ever dreamed of this man? In 2008, a website appeared asking that very question to the whole world and featuring a host of testimonials from people who claimed to have dreamt about him. Shortly after, posters started appearing in different cities across the globe, each bearing that spooky image in the same text. Anybody else getting the heebie-jeebies? Then, one year after it first appeared, the enigmatic website went viral. Suddenly, there were more eyes on the mystery than ever before, and it only got stranger. Over 10,000 people wrote to the website's email address reporting their own experiences of the curious man. Paranoia over who he was had erupted into a fever pitch. However, users on online forums like 4chan were more skeptical. They thought the entire concept was fishy. So they performed a techie little maneuver called a reverse IP lookup on the website. Long story short, they discovered that it was affiliated with a guerrilla marketing site. Guerrilla marketing essentially means promoting a product or idea by unconventional means. Could this man be nothing more than one big marketing ploy? It certainly seemed possible. But there wasn't enough evidence yet. Until the following year, in 2010 that is, when in another dramatic twist, the creator of the website came forward and revealed himself. 
Italian sociologist and marketer Andrea Natella had seen the growing skepticism surrounding the project and confirmed not only that he was behind it, but that it was indeed all just a stunt. The sketch of the mystery man was based on Natella's father, and those initial website testimonials were nothing but lies. Perplexingly, Natella had never revealed what the campaign was supposed to advertise, but the site was never updated nor taken down. In fact, people continue to believe this man is a real phenomenon, which isn't actually far from the truth. The 10,000 people that emailed Nutella when the stunt went viral weren't all lying. Many of them probably did see the man in their dreams, though only because they were influenced by seeing the image in the first place. Hmm, I still find it super weird that we don't know what Nutella was trying to sell. I can't imagine that face as the mascot of a new cereal brand, can you? Time Traveling Tourists If I had a nickel for every case of real time travel reported by the internet, I'd be in a mansion in Hawaii, not making YouTube videos. That said, what I'm about to show you made even cynical old me take a pause. A YouTube video posted in 2011 shows a seemingly ordinary old video of a Charlie Chaplin movie premiere from 1928 but it goes from an interesting piece of historical intrigue to an episode of The X-Files within seconds when an elderly woman steps into the frame holding a cell phone. I mean, what else could that be? What's more, an old photo from the Second World War went viral in 2022 for the same reason. The image taken in Reykjavik, Iceland in 1943 shows groups of US soldiers chatting with each other. But wait, who's this? This strange man in the light coat seems to be holding, yep, another cell phone. The web was sent into an absolute frenzy. Who were these people? Were they really time travelers? Some dismissed the objects as portable radios, but they weren't invented until 1941, which wouldn't explain the Chaplin clip. Another theory was that they were ear trumpets, a type of old school hearing aid. But the devices in question are far too small. Hmm, was this real time travel then? Well, perhaps not. Several commenters pointed out that while the devices were clearly not ear trumpets, they could still be a certain type of hearing aid. Specifically, a compact carbon amplified one that was held up to the ear and patented in 1924. While there's no way of entirely confirming this explanation, it makes a lot of sense. Much more than the idea of time travel. So these guys aren't time travelers after all, I'm afraid just two regular people that were hard of hearing. Less Doctor Who, more Doctor Who said that. Nightmare Fuel I've always found that the less information I have on something, the more unsettling it has the potential to be. Enter 11BX1371. No, I didn't just bash my head against the keyboard. That's the name of a disturbing DVD that was mailed to Johnny Kroblicker, the editor of Swedish tech blog Gadget ZZ, in 2015. Take a look. If that didn't make you slightly poop yourself, then you're braver than I am. The whole video is comprised of strange visuals and comfortable noises and that man in a plague doctor outfit. After watching it, Johnny was more than a little creeped out, especially when he realized the footage wasn't just a prank. It seemed to contain coded messages. Strange symbols and alphanumeric text flashed up in some frames and the plague doctor had a blinking light on his hand that appeared to blink in Morse code. Perplexed, Johnny posted the video on his blog and it wasn't long before the internet sleuths got to work on it. There was a ton to unpack. One of the codes translated into GPS coordinates for the White House and the Morse code was an anagram for a threat on the president's life. Yikes. The mystery deepened when one clever Redditor used a nifty program to translate the video's audio into imagery and found, well, all this. Yeah, totally not worrying. Uh, if I was Johnny, I'd have destroyed the DVD and fled the country by now. But nope, he kept on working with the internet detectives, and one of them actually figured out where the whole thing was filmed. The former Zofoika Sanatorium, south of Warsaw. Even with the codes cracked and the filming location found, though, the video still didn't make sense. Who made it? And why? Those questions remained frustratingly unanswered until the initial frenzy died down. Then a man named Parker Warner Wright suddenly came forward claiming he was behind the video. Now, many others had falsely claimed the same thing in the months prior, but this time was different. 
Wright actually released a sequel video on his YouTube channel with a similarly catchy name. 11B31369 features the return of the same Plague Doctor, proving that Wright was indeed behind the mask. According to him, it was just an art project all along, although he also said it does have a message, which nobody has managed to decipher yet. Right. If you have any idea at all what it could be, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. The Walking Dead? I'm sure everybody has spent some time thinking of their own zombie apocalypse survival plan. It's all a bit of fun, huh? After all, something like that would never happen in reality, right? Well, in May 2021, a shocking event made the residents of Seattle believe it could. A TikToker user uploaded a haunting video of a bedraggled zombie-like woman stumbling through the street and screeching. Excuse me, what? The chilling clip sent shockwaves through the web and caused rampant debate on TikTok. Some claimed that the so-called zombie was just an unwell woman in need of help, while others touted that she was possessed by a demon. And yes, some even believe this really was the start of a zombie apocalypse. Days went by and suspiciously, there was absolutely no news coverage or official update from TikTok on the matter. But those in the know needed answers, so they took the investigation into their own hands. Some other clips of the woman had serviced in which she was approached and eventually detained by police. Our budding detectives knew police have body cams to record incidents like this, so if they could just get a hold of the cops' footage, they'd gain more insight into what happened that day. Well, YouTuber Rebecca MS got straight on the case and requested it from the police. And a few months later, they sent it to her. I can't show you the clip itself because, you know, demonetization, but it revealed a shocking revelation. The cops go from caring and concerned to confused and annoyed when they realize the woman is actually just wearing makeup. That's right, further digging uncovered that the so-called zombie was one Kimberly Kasai, and the whole horrific stunt was a COVID vaccination protest. I guess she was trying to say the vaccines could make people zombies or something? Jeez. It's safe to say people were not happy with Kimberly, as well as wasting police time she'd worried the entire internet sick. As a result, she's locked down all her social media, and I'm not complaining. She's got one thing in common with zombies though, I guess. She really needs more brains. Whew, I'm exhausted. I felt like I was the one solving all those mysteries. Which did you find the most surprising? And are there any other internet mysteries you'd like me to cover? Let me know down in those comments. Thanks for watching.